adventures of Biggles. Elephant and his gang with their stolen cattle are hidden in the tall grass near Bronau's camp, and Biggles is ready to strike his final blow. Lieutenant Haynes and Mishu move ahead with the Ascaris in the trucks. They take possession of the camp, and Haynes places his soldiers in strategic position surrounding the high grass. All is now ready for the arrival of the plane. Biggles and Ginger come first with the mosquito. Biggles sees his objective ahead, glances back to make sure that Algy and Bertie are following the proctor then sends his machine into a steep dive. Straight in the grass. Whistle picks those cattle. And if Algy dives straight after us with the proctor, we'll follow you, Algy, and he'll follow us, and we'll keep going until the cattle are nearly cuckoo. That'll drive the black elephant's cloak out of hiding. Here we go, Ginge. Right over the grass. Nothing much. Yes. Yes, there's some movement in the grass. There goes Algy. Following our noise, he'll make some movement. Here comes the proctor. This should do it, Michu. Mac 20 noise, Werner. They do this long time, Michu, go mad. As long as it sends the cattle off. Oh. Werner, the cattle. Michu here, the cattle. Darn if I can hear anything. I'm deafened by those plates. By Jingo, yes. That one of them, breaking from the grass. And another. Many cattle go. And method, Mishu say method come from grass. They'll come now. Here's the mosquito in again. Have you ever seen such a shamble? Biggles' idea was a good one. Cattle and men everywhere. Cattle tearing about the place with ladies in front of them. Ladies burbling about with cattle ahead. It's like a valley old stew pot with everything bubbling everywhere. Give her one more flip, old sausage, just for luck. Right there. Good grief! Ah. We look at that character sprinting out now. He's dressed for a party. Setazolo. Setazolo, is it? All right. We'll move across and grab him. 
This for Misho. Misho got set and thrown out. No! No, come back, Misho! Leave him alone for us! You confounded savage, Misho! Black elephant not kill anyone anymore. He died. It's all over, Biggles. Yes, and very satisfactorily. I made a last scout round the area to see if there were any stragglers. Sausage on the hoof or natives, old bean? Natives. <laughs> I don't think many got away. Haynes should be able to tell us. Congratulations, Inspector. Your stunt worked magnificently. Yes, the cattle flushed out the crooks very smartly. How many did you grab? We've rounded up 30 so far. Mishu has taken a part into the forest to pick up any that slipped away. He won't find many. From the air, it seemed that every time a native broke from the grass, he ran slap bang into the arms of an Ascari. But the swan bloke we didn't see. Have you picked up Zeta Zulu yet? The black elephant? He's lying over there. Hey, potatoes, he's flustered. What happened? Did he get in the way of a stampeding sausage? No, he didn't. There's a spear in his chest. There's no need to ask who did that. I'm not very happy about it, Inspector. We didn't kill him in self-defense or anything like that. He saw Seta Zulu speaking this way, and he went out straight after him with his assegai. Strictly speaking, it was murder. Oh, now, baked potatoes. Oh, wasn't Seta Zulu a murderer? All right, all right, right. Calm down, fellows. There's no need to go off the deep end about it. Strictly speaking, Mr. Haynes is right. Well, don't let's speak so badly strictly. But he probably doesn't know that Mishu's master was killed by the black elephant. No, I didn't know that. Nor that his fellow tribesmen were robbed and their villages burnt by the same devil. I see what you mean. Mishu had some justification then. Mishu is an uncivilized native. In his own eyes, what he did was right. And in our eyes, all he did was to save the hangman a job. I think the eyes of the law could glance the other way for once. Don't you, Mr. Haynes? <laughs> well, perhaps they could. Well, if you don't mind, I'll load my fellows onto the trucks right away. I'm rather anxious to get back to Pat. We'll wait we're within a quarter of an hour, Inspector. Right, oh. He's anxious to get back to Pat. Sizzling sausages, how do you like that? Go carefully with her. Have you fixed the cabin, Elsie? Yes, yeah, she'll be quite comfortable in here. What's happening? I've just arrived back with the trucks. It's Pat. She's not too well. Uh, take it gently, Bertie. He's going to the side. Here, what's the matter? The wound must, be, must have become septic. She was delirious when we arrived back and running a high fever. I gave her a shot of morphia to put her to sleep. And where are the boys taking her in the play? Algy's flying her up to Juba, your headquarters. I understand there's a hospital there. Yes, a very good one. I'll follow with the trucks as soon as I can. I'm taking the mozzie to Camp Parlour to let the authorities know what's happened. And then flying to Juba to pick up Algy. Well, I'll say goodbye then, Mr. Haynes. Right. Keep clear, you blokes. I'm taking off now. See you later, Algie. And Pat. Well, the doctor tells me you will be in a hospital here for some weeks yet. Well, that's bad news, Pat. Positively the worst that could ever be waffled at us by Joe. What are we going to do without you, old darling? Get along fine, as you did before I joined you. Sometimes I think you'd be much better without a girl tagging along. Oh, what nonsense, Pat. You're part of the team. It functions like a broken-down old engine when you aren't with it. I refuse to believe it. 
And you'll prove me right when you go back to England. There's certain to be another job waiting for you. You'll do it magnificently. Just you, Biggles, and you, Algy, and Bertie and Ginge. We'll miss you like blazes, Pat. And I'll miss you, too. It's going to be dreadfully lonely here by myself. Hey, Pat. You haven't forgotten I'm here, have you? This is my headquarters. I'm going to see that my next assignment is serious to keep you from being lonely. You'll be in good hands with Jerry Haynes to mother you, Pat. But I second Alger's motion. We'll miss you like blazes. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye, Biggles. And goodbye to all of you. Good luck on your next job. Whatever happens when you reach England, see that the old team comes out on top. Even though... Even though I'm not with you. Don't like this fog much. Seems to be growing worse. Oh, we're back in England now, old son. No use yearning for those African twilights here. This is the foggy old dark. And if you don't like it, you can very well lump it. <laughs> I like it even if the fogs do make flying unpleasant. I don't suppose you've been checking on our position, have you, Bertie? What, over England? No need to, old sausage. We Lizzie know the valley place as well as we know the bumps and notches on old Harriet. Well, where are we then? All I can see below is this is a pea soup. And we're flying over Norfolk. Well, we're approaching the coast. We aren't actually over it yet. I caught a glimpse of the jolly old wash a few minutes ago. Made me feel positively unclean. I know that much myself. But I'm not sure just what part of the wash or Norfolk we're flying over. Hop off and tell Algy and Ginge that I'm making a forced landing. Maybe a blind landing. Well, so! A spot of excitement in England itself. Harry and old darling, prepare for thrills. Don't joke about it, Bertie. We aren't down yet. There may be more thrills ahead than we bargained for. Neither Biggles nor Bertie can guess what lies ahead. But there are thrills awaiting the air police. Will they make the forced landing safely? What will they find when they put down? Share their thrills in the exciting new story of The Air Adventures of Biggles.